Hello everyone, this is Jimmy, and welcome to episode 3 of Septech Ages. So, uh, between episodes as promised, I went ahead and gathered up a small number of animals. Uh, I have, what is this, three sheep, only one chicken. I haven't been able to find another, either a chicken or an egg. Is that an egg under him? Nope. Uh, chickens in this pack lay feathers and eggs, but uh, it doesn't seem like he's laid an egg yet. That's fine. A uh, couple pigs and one cow. And I think I'm going to show you how I've been getting these animals. So let's go get that second cow together. Oh, I also uh, got a horse. So saddles have recipes in this pack. Um, remember we made leather last episode, so now we can make saddles. And with saddles, we can now ride horses around. It's uh, significantly faster than just walking, so it's pretty nice to have a horse. So anyways, what I've been doing is I found a... Um, I'm not quite sure what biome it is over here, but uh, give, me, give me that. I need more seeds. Um, I found... I think it's like a plains or something, maybe a savanna. I'm not actually quite sure. But anyways, in this biome here that has a bunch of horses in it, and there's also a few cows right over here there's also a lot of parrots like ooh, parrots but the thing about parrots is they're really hard to tame like you try to tame it you like, nope get a couple more seeds i have uh one tame parrot back at the base and if i can get a second one we can breed those as well but yeah they, they don't like to be tamed whatever uh i carried an untamed one back already so anyways we just walk up shift right click the cow to pick it up god knows what that looks like yeah, you know what? I'm just going to not ask any questions. Um, and then I can, while carrying a cow, get back on my horse. Because obviously that's how things work. And then just ride my horse back. So, like this, it's uh, much faster than just going on foot to, you know, running over here, picking up a cow, running back. I built this little bridge because horses are awful swimmers. So yeah, now that we have a few animals, um, I think it's time we start breeding them. So if you recall, one of the uh, totemic uh, ceremonies, I think they were called, is, uh, is for breeding animals. So if we pull out our totempedia, the... is it this one? Nope, that's for hatching eggs. Is it... Rite of Spring, I think it's that one. Yeah, so active, act, after activating, all nearby animals and villagers will breed consume, consuming food items. However, there's a chance that the food item will not be consumed. So basically, if there is food around, they'll eat some of it to breed. So, um, if we want to breed cows, pigs, and sheep. What do sheep eat? Do they eat wheat? <laughs> so we'll need wheat, uh, carrots, wheat, and I think... These eat, chickens eat uh, seeds, but we don't need to breed chickens. So what I'm going to go do, I think, I think I used up all of my wheat and my seeds in an attempt to breed, um, yeah, I did, in a, or an attempt to tame the, uh, the parrots. So I have one tame parrot and one yet untamed parrot that, that just does his own thing. But whatever, as long as he doesn't fly too far away, I can find him again later. So how about I go gather up some seeds and we'll set up a little farm and another one of the totemic rituals will help us speed it up. So uh, let me gather, gather a small number of wheat seeds to get us started and I'll show you what I mean. Alright, so I set up a little farm here. I have some rice in this corner. Uh, these are potatoes and carrots. I forget which is which. And some wheat here. So I could just leave it growing slowly and it'll take, you know, some amount of time, right, like 15, 20 minutes maybe for these to grow up, but there is one of the uh, rituals that we mentioned, or uh, I always forget what they're called, ceremonies. So the Zafkiel Waltz will cause plants to grow. So let's see how we execute it. It's wind chime, and then flute. So I have my flute with me, and I've already hung some wind chimes. So hit one, hit the other. And then just start doing the thing. Oh, I don't have my dress on. Hopefully it's enough without it. Looks like we'll be okay. 
And then when it completes, you'll see that everything grows pretty quickly and that, that little countdown timer is how long the effect is active for. So during this time, I can go harvest whatever I like, you know. Uh, I guess let's focus on the wheat because that's what we we're really here for. But yeah, this is a... Uh, it's manual, so it's not like, you know, this isn't automatable as far as I know, but it's a very powerful way to make your plants grow much quicker. So with this, we can very quickly, you know, harvest up a bunch of potatoes, wheat, etc, etc. I'll do this a couple times to fill up the farm. I think this is like a 13 by 13 farm. And when it's filled up, uh, you know, each time I play it, it'll basically grow every single plant. And then... Before we know it, we will have all the all the plant materials we could ever dream of using. Pretty cool, huh? So, all right, I'm gonna go and and um, fill up this farm, and I'll come back when we have it done. All right, our farm is now filled up. I've harvested it once, and I have an inventory full of plants, or at least I have plenty of plants in my inventory. So let's start by seeing if we can tame that other parrot before it flies away. I've already thrown like 20 seeds into it. There we go. So now we have two tame parrots. We'll use these later. Um, we'll use them later for a totemic thing. But for now, let's come over here. So I think if we do the, let's see, which is a breeding ritual, flute and drum again, okay? If we do that one and we throw some of these on the ground. So no, let me check what sheep breed with. I think it's, I think it's wheat. Actually, instead of Googling it, why don't I just feed them some? Definitely wheat. Okay, good to know. So if we throw some wheat into here, some wheat into here, uh, some carrots, I think it's what these, right? Carrots into here, and this guy's dropping eggs. So we'll, I'll do something with that in a second. Um, we should be able to breathe these by playing the flute plus drum melody. I'll just leave the egg here. Alright, so flute, drum. There we go. I'll, maybe I should just keep my, uh, my belt on, my dress, whatever. Because without it, I might not have enough music. Yeah, it looks like something's even run out already. It looks like we're all out. Alright, let me get that jingle dress on. I made a backpack too that holds, uh, well, stuff. I don't really need the armor from these pants, I just keep the dress on. You know what, let me grab two, well no, more drums I don't think gives me more total drumming. So let's try that again. Uh, flute plus drum. I have to be careful not to click the sign. If I click the sign, it pulls up the sign editing UI. There we go. So now these should breed again. And you can, well, we already had a baby sheep, so the sheep might not breed again because they're not breedable yet. But we should get a baby cow. There's one. And a baby pig. And then to hatch that egg, you can normally, if you throw the egg at something, right, you have like a 1 in, what, 10-ish chance of getting a hatchling or a chick. But if you do, let's see, chimes plus flute, you can get a 100% hatch rate. So let's do that. Chimes plus flute. And then just do this again. And then we should observe that egg will hatch into a full-grown chicken. Um, so yeah, with this, I think over time I'll slowly breed up our animal count. I guess I shouldn't leave the food down there, it'll despawn. I count on having jump boost to get out of here, but while the ritual's running, it turns off the totems. Oh, I guess I'm stuck in here until the ritual runs out. Anyways, um, yeah, we I think with this we have our basic, uh, you know, animal ranching setup done. Um, I think the next thing I want to look into is 
So once we have a few more cows, we can start turning them into buffalo, which are, you know, beasts of burden. They can they can do work for us. We can also summon a boss to fight him to get a pretty powerful bow. I think it has infinity or something. Um, but before we even get there, let's see if we can set up a system to... You know how we have that grindstone over here? We have this grindstone that, uh, you know, you right-click to do work. Or, um, or we have this, like, uh, chopping table where, you know, you have to chop the wood. Well, we can automate that process a little bit by having animals do the actual work for us. We still have to manually, you know, do input and output. But we can have, uh, for now, either our wolves or maybe a couple horses uh, do the work for us. So to set that up, we need to make... Um, a horsepower grindstone, or horsepower chopper, and a horsepower press. And each of those needs a, I think it's a 7x7 seven seven working space. Um, one of these things will tell me. So if we look here, uh, it needs a 7x7x2 seven by seven by area that is clear so we need to build some seven by seven pens and i think since uh we're gonna use buffalo for these in the you know eventually let's build nine by nine pens um and we need to build at least uh there's three of these tools i believe so let's build four um nine by nine pens to house our you know beasts of burden in so i'm gonna come back when that's done all right, here we have it. Four uh, nine by nine working areas, I guess we would call it for animals. And it took so long for me to dig that that I think we have enough cows that we can turn a couple of them into buffalo. So to turn cows into buffalo, you have to do another one of the totemic ceremonies. So let me grab. Uh, let's do. I don't know, maybe three for now. Let's grab a couple adult cows. I think they have to be adults. And then there is one of the totemic rituals. Um, this pen is actually a little too big, so we might have to push them back, but let's see. Drums plus chime is the buffalo dance. And let's consult the book and see what exactly that does. So buffalo, some lord, they are now extinct, whatever. Um, it turns cows into buffaloes, but they start as baby buffaloes, which is actually good because we can't carry full-grown buffalo, but we can carry babies. So, rum plus chimes, and it's a two-note difficulty song. Let's put uh, this in our offhand and start playing. Uh, I guess it's a, is it a one-shot thing? I guess it is. So, um, I'll do that other one later. But if we take these buffalo, we can pick them up while they're babies and move them to their, you know, their new homes. And we'll, once these grow up, I think they take about 15 minutes to grow, if memory serves me right. Um, when they grow up, we can use them to pull the, uh, like the carts that will, or to pull the, like the horsepower machines. So I haven't built the machines yet, but I'll do that next. Let me finish growing this little guy. Hey, you, come here. And let's keep him here with a little bit of dirt. You know what, while I'm at it, I may as well grow a fourth buffalo. I have enough baby cows to do this, right? Yeah. Kidnap the cow. All right, so anyways, um, I'm going to grow a couple more buffalo, and then um, I think I'll leave buffalo over in this pen. And uh, maybe I'll put the rest of my horses in here as well, and then I'll go build the various horsepower machines. So I'll see you when that's done. All right, our buffalo are all grown up, and they're hooked up to uh, these various horsepower machines with leads. So I'm thinking what we'll do is, um, I believe these can all be fed with hoppers. So these uh, wooden hoppers, I may basically just take the item that's sitting on top of them and transports it into the uh, inventory below. And we can put a chest in the hopper, 
or above the hopper rather and then we can put another chest down here these are these are these basic um what are they like 15 14 slot chests and then once we hook it all up with another hopper this is like the the most basic form of automation available in this pack so you saw that one piece of whoops i didn't want to take the lead stay there i want to open the chest uh, if i put some let's put some planks in here to cut into sticks and what will happen is the buffalo will just do circles and you can slowly watch the thing work and there we go it turned them into sticks which are pulled out and put in the chest so um this process for one i think is more efficient each piece of wood becomes like four sticks or something or maybe two i don't know i think it's can i tell yeah so each piece of wood becomes four whereas if we do it by hand we get depending on the tool we use we get uh, usually one or two I think we're using I, I don't know either way um we can also use this to turn wood uh, if i have any of my inventory into planks but it doesn't look like i do well um that's the uh chopping block and let's set up all the other machines when we get our jump boost buff so this one is the press the press for some reason has to be put one tile off the ground not that it's a meaningful difference we hook it up more or less the same way And then I don't think I have anything to press right now. Can I press these? No. So we'll just let that be. Wait, no. Or is this one the grindstone? This one's a grindstone, isn't it? So let's take the wheat that we have. It said we can grind it into flour, which I imagine we can hook into bread. Flat bread, good enough. So let's... I'll throw a stack into there. And you see the animal starts doing its thing. And it'll turn wheat into uh, that flour substance pretty soon. Any day now. And there we go. So, again, I'll just let that run in the background. And for our last pen, we have the press, which squeezes things. And I think one of the... Uh, what the quest wants us to do is it wants us to squeeze some charcoal. So let me hook this up to our... or with uh, hoppers and stuff. And then I'll go get us some charcoal to, to uh, press. So if we check in here, the pro press charcoal into a larger block using the horsepower thingamajigger. Let's see how that works. Low grade charcoal can be... I think we have to first grind it into regular charcoal. And then we can press it. Yeah, so we grind it into four and then press it into nine. So let's go get some charcoal and do that. So we need wood. I guess we'll cut a tree. I'm not quite sure what the difference between these charcoal blocks is, but I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. Um, so charcoal is made in this thingy. Anyways, I'll come back once I have it crushed down. Here we are with nine pieces of charcoal. So we can put it in here. I guess we could have put it directly into the machine, but... Once it trickles down, the buffalo should start doing laps. I love how their tiny little legs go. You run, buffalo, you run. Um, anyways, the reason why I use path block here is that I believe mobs, including friendly mobs, move faster on path than on uh, grass. I think it's just a vanilla mechanic. So that completes the advancement. Now, what exactly is this used for? I'm honestly not quite sure. Doesn't look like anything special for now, but um, whatever, it's an option. So next up, let's look at what we can do. With Buffalo, we can kill one of them to collect their hide and move towards that stuff. But I'm thinking let's start working our way towards age one. So that requires making 
the upgraded hoppers, and then eventually a uh, melter, which is like the poor man smeltery. So let's see what it takes to make uh, Mark II and flame hoppers. So we already have, I think we have a couple leftover Mark I hoppers. Upgrading this is just bark and cobweb. That's fine. And upgrading to the flame hopper, the flame grilled hopper, um, it also acts as fire for like our uh, stone grill and for, for the various machines that need fire under them. It can be both the hopper and the flame. So that's why we needed those shadow gems. We also need to gather some red cedar, which is uh, made from a totemic ritual. Uh, charcoal dust, which we have to pulverize from charcoal. Oh, so I guess we have to make the millstone to do that. So let's, I guess let's make the millstone then. So the millstone's an upgrade to the grindstone. We can make this pretty easily, but we also need a hand crank. Which I think requires... Yeah, the wooden gear requires four buffalo teeth. So I think it's time for some of... Wait, can we... Is there another wooden gear we can make? Nope, looks like just the one. So I think it's time for this poor buffalo to bite the dust. Sorry, buffalo. Please give us a lot of teeth. We got one. So I guess I need to make a few more buffalo. That'll be our next step. So I'll go make the buffalo and make the rest of the components for this uh, better with mods millstones. Very low, low tech automation or low tech uh, resource processing. One of the things we needed for the hand crank, in addition to the four buffalo teeth, which I've now collected, are some red cedar. So as it says in the tooltip, red cedar can only be acquired via a totemic ceremony. And what that does is it turns um, saplings into red cedar saplings. So if we check the book, uh, the rite of spring, which is one that makes animals breed, will also turn saplings into red cedar saplings. So it's flute drum. Loot, drum, and then the rest we know all about. And that should turn these into red cedar. And let's sleep through the night, and then I'll go grab some bone meal to grow it. I've had uh, one of these things crushing up some of those bone blocks, so this should be yep, plenty of bone meal to go around. So come here, grow one of these. Chop it down, and then we should be able to make our hand crank. Which means, um, I don't quite remember what we needed it for, but it was some component of the... Uh, of the hopper, right? These trees grow pretty tall. They're kind of like spruce trees. I think they only grow vertically, so they won't, um, let's put these somewhere else. They, they won't uh, grow sideways like uh, those big stupid oak trees, but they do grow a little taller than you can hit by hand. So I'll plant them to grow. We'll cut this one up. Man, this poor buffalo is still working, huh? Let's cut up quite a bit of wood. Alright, finish this one. I need you to cut that. And then we can make our hand crank. All these early automation options are really slow. So it's all about, you know, making the stuff before you need it. Kind, kind of like batch processing in uh, in Omni Factory, you know, the early Omni Factory machines were also extremely slow. So this is four teeth and four of the red cedar. There's like a cavern beneath me and the mobs down there are apparently aggroed on me or something. So they kind of just annoy me a little bit, but nah, nothing to be done. What are those pieces? Just two pieces of cobble. 
so this um, setup, the millstone and the hand crank, we can just put anywhere. I believe we can just put this on top and then we can just right click it and it'll, you know, do whatever work needs to be done in here. Now each time you right click it, if you look at our food bar, it takes a little bit of food away from us. So, um, use a, yeah, the mobs down there are exploding and it's, it's frightening me a little bit. But it, anyways, this gives us a good chance to eat some food. And hey, I was about to say, I think we're just about to max out one of our categories. So our protein is now, I guess, high enough that we get the buff from it, which is uh, two and a half hearts and I guess a nourished buff. Maybe that's something else. I think eventually you also get like resistance and uh, strength and that kind of stuff from these buffs. So it's good to have, you know, I mean, it's ideally you have all four categories maxed, but for now, just having even one maxed or high is good. So anyways, um, we wanted to make the hopper. Oh cool, it gives us a better with mods book. So well, this needed charcoal dust, which is, ah, so we have to crush some of that charcoal. So I think I have it in here. Can I just do this? Of course not. So we've, I don't know why it had us make it into a block just to make it back into individual pieces, but whatever. So we can just do this. I think we have to, we have to pull the lever a couple times. And at this point, it is important that you have a reasonable supply of food, otherwise you're just going to run out of food while doing this. I think if you put a inventory next to it, it'll put the items in the inventory, maybe? Or a hopper under it? I'm sure the book will... Whoop, that's not the book. I'm sure the book will tell me. Let's see... No, it doesn't say anything about outputs. Oh well, whatever. Um, later we can automate these with uh, like water mills and stuff. So when we get there, um, I think we can just grab the outputs and uh, you know push them over hoppers with the same water that's driving the water wheels. But we're not at water powered stuff yet. So anyways, now that we have our two pieces of charcoal dust, I'll do the rest later. We should be able to make- oh we need a shark tooth. So sharks spawn in the ocean. Um, I haven't seen any yet. I, I have a feeling this isn't an ocean biome. So I set up this strainer. Um, if you look, the strainer will get, gather shark's teeth as well as some of this other stuff. But it only has a 50 or 5% chance to get either ink sacs or shark teeth. And beyond that, it has 50-50 whether it's an ink sac or a shark teeth. So it looks like we, quite ha we haven't gotten lucky to get a shark's tooth yet. Which is unfortunate. Um, I guess we'll let this run a little bit more and then in the meanwhile I'll swim out to the ocean and see if we can find us some sharks. Well I didn't find a shark but I found a nice large above ground, I think these are like fossils. So I'm gonna gather up all the bone so that we have more bone meal for later. Convenient. Alright we spent uh, maybe about a day, like 20-30 minutes sailing around looking. Uh, actually probably not even that long. But uh, I did a small lap. None of this, I think, is ocean biome, so none of it was eligible to spawn sharks, I believe. So, oh well. Let's see if our strainer got a shark, oops, got a shark tooth. Hey, and it did. Cool. So, I already forgot what we needed this for. Ah, the uh, flame whopper. Okay, so what do we need for that? We have two charcoal dust. We have a hopper. We have our shark tooth. And we just need two red cedar planks. Easy as that. So let's put, actually, let's macerate these down. Put this uh, buffalo to work. And then get some of this red cedar that should be in here. I really want to get it without having to jump down. There we go. Alrighty, so we have red cedar. Let's look up the recipe for that. Let's go get one of our shadow gems. Remember, quite early we killed uh, the big shadow monsters, which dropped these. 
in my previous playthrough, these were kind of annoying to get because uh, we just I didn't get any of the big shadow mob spawns. I just had to kill the little ones. I had to kill a bunch of the little ones. But hey, I'll take it. Sometimes you get lucky, right? I really wish those stupid like trumpet skeletons down there somewhere would go away. All right, so here's our flame whopper, flame grilled whopper. Um, where do we want to use this? Let's use this to automate this thing. So, well, actually, no, let, let's just not use it yet, because we get a better way to automate these later. We can we right for now we can only extract through the bottom of a block, but I think we can use this yeah as a crafting thing for the porcelain melter. So I think that's our next quest. All right, so yeah, uh, that's a porcelain something anyways. That's the porcelain heater, which is a bunch of clay and porcelain bricks, which I think is more clay. It is clay, white dye, and flint. And white dye can come from grinding. Can it come from bone meal? It can. Okay, so let's make some of that dye, and then I'll get ready to make up a big batch of porcelain to make our... Uh, our beginning porcelain melter, which will be the first of our metal processing tools. All right, and now I've made uh, the clay barrels, and the next step is to make all this porcelain. Unfortunately, this is going to involve pulling this lever something like a hundred times. It does about a quarter of a of a progress per. So um, yeah, I'm going to pull this lever a hundred times. Looks like it'll take like two, three minutes, maybe more, and then I'll be back when uh, we're done making porcelain. So our porcelain is now in the process of cooking up, and I think we're ready to make the heater and the melter. So I think the heater is uh, it uses solid fuels to melt um, like metals, and then the melter is like a mini smeltery. So we need one of each. So this shouldn't be too bad. I think I have everything to make it in my inventory. So this should be the uh, the melter or the heater, I forget which is which. That's one, and then the other one uses our hopper and a chest. Sorry for that Discord ping, apparently my streamer mode got turned off. And the hopper. So with this, we should be ready to go into age one. And indeed, we get a we get a pretty lag spike as everything loads. But now when we look in, in our advancements book, um, we've done all of the, I guess this is like the core line. So we've unlocked age one. And in age one, we get access to a lot more stuff, including, first and foremost, the crafting table. So let's make one of those. Do I have four wood on me? That'll work, right? Oh, thank God. We finally have a crafting table. Thank you for your uh, your efforts, work stump. You may now go away and hopefully never be needed again. I don't think you're used for any crafting, right? So uh, we'll, we'll set you aside because you're, you're a bit of a relic, but we can now use a conventional crafting table. In addition to this, I think we have access to stuff like vanilla chests. Um with just eight pieces of wood uh, when we we can make it with sidings when we start making these but uh yeah so I think that is a significant achievement we have, we're now in age one let's see what the defining feats of age one are so we have to start working with metals make some get some uh, tin and bronze do some abyssal craft stuff go to the beneath to get some aquamarine and finish it up with a little bit of astral sorcery. So I'm really looking forward to the astral sorcery stuff, but we have some infrastructure to build before we get there. Now, before we wrap up this episode, let's do one last thing and fight the uh, Baycock boss. So this is done via a totemic ritual. Um, hey, there's our Tinker's Construct book. Let's see, do I have my totemic book on me? 
So this is done using the this one. Nope. Uh, I'll, I'll figure out which uh, of these songs it is that we have to do to summon the boss, and then I think that'll be the last thing we do this episode to wrap us up. Well, I took a look. Um, the to or the ceremony to summon the boss requires the ego bone whistle, which if we look in JEI, ego bone whistle comes from ego bones and ego feathers, which are spawned via another ceremony. So I expect this to be a little shorter, but I guess we'll just we'll just jump down this rabbit hole a little bit right now. The eagle dance is used to transform uh let's see, parrots into bald egos. And then they can be tamed and bred. So let's see what this ceremony is. Rattle, wind chime. And we should have both of those. Rattle, wind chime. Let's sleep through the night and then do this ceremony. Now, you're probably asking, how are we going to get the bones and feathers out of the eagle? Well, since this is America, we're obviously not allowed to kill bald eagles, so uh, we'll do a little magic. So I forget what order it was in already. Rattle, wind chime. Rattle, chime. And hopefully we have enough. Looks like we're out of drum music, we're out of something else music. And it's looking like we might need a little bit more music. No, no, maybe we'll make it. Hey, we did it. So that should turn our, that guy into an eagle. And then by the magic of magic, we can get his drops. I have no clue what happened, I swear. One moment there was an eagle, the next moment there was an eagle bone and an eagle feather. Don't ask me what happened. So, let's uh, make ourselves this eagle flute. And with this, we now have another instrument, which I believe means we can play it alongside the uh, flute and the brattle to work on the next song, which is the boss one. So if you look, that was a three-star song and we almost ran out of music. Well, this is a five-star song, so I suspect we might not have enough musical power to do it, but let's give it a try. It's wind chime and then Eagle Bone Whistle. So I think we'll put this in our offhand, alternate between these as we go. All right, here's hoping. We're already out of drum music. I think we're out of flute music. Hey, there we go. So that should summon a boss when it's done, and I hope he doesn't kill me. Oh, he's totally going to kill me. Get him, boys. Killed my dog! I'm gonna run and hide and heal. I hope I have food. This is uh awkward. Alright, my dog's got him. Ow! Stop! Mercy! I'll just let the dogs finish him at this point. You can see his health bar at the top dwindling down. There we go. So with that, uh, let's put some other stuff away. We now have range combat unlocked. So um, I think we get, we just barely got into stage one today, which means we have a lot more options for what we can do next episode. But uh, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.